about uh, there are two matters where you have concern, and one is um, the the matter that would um, not apply to to people who were under sixty uh, under eighteen. Yes. That's in section uh, sub section five A yes. in section one. Could you perhaps um, expand a bit on uh, your written submission? Yes. Um, I think this particular provision is drawn from English experience as well in the Criminal Justice Act of 2003. Uh, but as I understand it, the English have a quite separate system of youth criminal justice from the system that we have in Scotland. We, of course, have the children's panel, which we... Uh, which it takes in a non-criminal way that problems arising in relation to young people. Uh, and on the other hand, we still have, in the more serious cases, uh, in particular cases in which we have to bring young people under 18 before the ordinary criminal courts. Now, in circumstances in which they are brought before the criminal courts because a 17-year-old has committed murder or a robbery or something of that sort, then... Uh, we don't see in principle why the purposes and principles of, which are set out in the earlier part of the section shouldn't apply to them equally. Of course, you will also have to take into account their, their youth. But otherwise, the question as to whether uh, it would help in the reform and rehabilitation of offenders seems equally apt to such a person as it would apply to a 19 or 21-year-old. I'm grateful um, um, for that point. Is there anything, uh, given that, um, well, the, the principles and purposes is not essential, but is there anything that you would, uh, you would wish to add that should be included um, in this uh, particular uh, part uh, of the, um, the legislation? I don't think there's anything I would press for. I notice, I think, the sheriffs in their submission talked about denunciation. Uh, uh, where it is important, for example, for a judge sentencing a particularly atrocious uh, case to uh, express society's condemnation of what has been done. That, I suspect, is not so much a purpose or principle of sentencing as uh, an appropriate mechanism to be used in the manner in which you actually express why you are doing what you are doing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There are still some unresolved issues regarding the Scottish Sentencing Council. On that background, I'm going to ask Paul Martin to explore that now. Uh, thank you, Convener. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Lord Hamilton, one of the functions of the proposed Sentencing Council will be to prepare sentencing guidelines, which the court must have due regard to. And I just wonder what your interpretation of the uh, phrase regard to would be. Well, it is constraining in a significant to a significant extent. It doesn't mean to say that you are bound absolutely by it, but it does involve a significant restraint, and I think it would be intended to do that. That is to say that uh, just as uh, a, a guideline judgment issued presently by uh, the uh, appeal court is something which uh, the lower courts require to have regard to and, uh, uh, and, and, and deal with in that way, uh, likewise, uh, the, if this bill went through, not only the, senten the initial sentencing courts, but the appeal court dealing with sentencing guidelines and the like, and dealing with cases on appeal, would likewise be constrained by these particular provisions uh, and would require to uh, apply them unless there was good reason not to. And do you welcome that particular well, phrase being inserted in statute? Uh, well, I don't, I don't welcome the concept uh, if, if the situation is that it is to be laid down by the Sentencing Council as distinct from laid down by the Appeal Court on a recommendation by the Sentencing Council. But there will be circumstances in terms of, I mean, if we use this phrase, regard to. Yes. But the judiciary could still ignore it at the end of the day. I mean, they could, they could, you know, we can simulate the process and well, say, well, given regard to, but taking a decision anyway. Well, I think, I think we have to proceed upon the premise that the courts will actually implement the Acts of Parliament which are uh, there for them to, uh, to apply. Uh, and there, there no doubt will be circumstances, but they will require to be carefully examined where a, co a lower court may say, well, I've had regard to it, but I think that the circumstances are special and therefore I shouldn't apply this particular guideline. That will be open to examination as it would be open to examination if it was a guideline laid down by the court. Uh, 
And finally, Lord Hamilton, do you think more has to be done to provide sentencers uh, with sentencing guidelines uh, and, and the general public with accurate information into the sentencing process? Well, um, so far as sentencing guidelines are concerned, I see there is a, an increasing, I think there is an increasing use of that particular matter by the, by the court itself. So far as uh, alerting the public to what is happening, I think there have been important developments in relation to our um, dealings with the press on the one hand and the public on the other hand in relation to what we actually do in the process of sentencing. There we sheriffs and judges much more frequently now issue sentencing statements in which if there is a case which is likely to give rise to public concern or anxiety or interest, then a sentencing statement is, is very often uh, made, uh, indicated. And that could be one in which there was an explanation as to why a particular principle of sentencing had been adopted. And in respect of the sentencing process yes. and information uh, being developed for, the, for public consumption, do you think the Sentencing Council could play a role in that? Well, I mean, it, it, it could be a, a source of information as to what it was doing uh, in, in that regard. If it, if it was, as I suggest, if there was to be a council, an advisory body, it could um, publicise what in fact it was doing uh, in order that the public could understand what, uh, uh, what was being done. Thank you very much. Um, can I come back to, if I were to accept the premise that the Sentencing Council is established um, in some form or other, I'm just wondering whether you could suggest uh, what changes you'd like to see to the composition and the membership of that council, please? Well, I, uh, I, I would strongly urge that it should be, have a, a judicial uh, majority. Um, if, uh, I think where it is short uh, of representation is in relation to senior members of the judiciary. I think uh, merely having the chairman as the Lord Justice Clark and one other uh, judge, who first, effectively a first instance criminal judge, uh, as the only two senators on the commission or the uh, council uh, is inappropriate. I would be minded to double that to four uh, uh, senators. I would leave the, uh, the number of sheriffs uh, and the number of uh, uh, justices the same. I think I would remove the constable. I don't see the function of the constable in this regard. And I think I would reduce uh, 5A, 5B, that's uh, Schedule 1, Paragraph 1, 5B, from two other persons to one other person. So that would be a, a, a remain a 12 membership body, but with uh, judicial office holders comprising seven out of the 12. That would be my suggestion. I was wondering if I could, we, we could spend the next half hour picking over that. I'm wondering if I could just pick up on the, the principle then of the, two, of the two lay people, or indeed lay people in general, because I think it brings me back to, to the basic principle of this. Surely it is open to society to have a say in sentencing policy. Not the individual case, we're, we're, we're quite clear on that. But sentencing policy is surely something which concerns the man in the street. And whilst it would be wholly inappropriate just to pick two men or women off the street, there are surely people outside the legal system who can bring some life experience and some, as we do, I mean, I'm not, not suggesting they should be MSPs or ex-MSPs or anything, but we represent the world whom we meet sometimes. Surely it's not inappropriate, at least, for people like us as representatives of society to be part of this process of policy development. Well, I, I'm, I'm quite content with that. It's, it's really the, the, uh, the degree of involvement, as it were. And I could see that uh, there could be a, a very important input <coughs> from uh, somebody who had particular knowledge of uh, the issues faced by persons of victims of crime, or somebody, a penologist or whatever, who had some particular knowledge of the effects on uh, persons con uh, convicted of particular disposals, that these particular aspects could be brought very usefully into an exercise which gave rise to uh, informed advice as to what the court should do. Thank you. I'm, I'm just wondering if I 
Then you've, you've obviously told us quite a bit, I think, about the process of establishing guidance.